Hi everyone, it's Chris here at Blue Willow Mercantile again. I thought today I'd share with you some ideas for making these wonderful pin cushions that several of you have commented on when you stop in the store. They're a great stash buster, or perhaps you want to use a charm pack or a layer cake that you've picked up and just haven't decided what to do with it. I personally love making these. I think they're fun. The Pin Pals book, which we have in stock, has several different patterns to choose from. The one that I'm going to use today is on page 23 and it's called Pink Half Square Triangles. You'll notice I've selected out of our scraps several shades of pink, some yellows, and then some greens. My greens are going to be my setting triangles around here. So you need scraps or charm pack layer cake, and then of course some scrap batting. And who doesn't have that laying around, right? So let's do the first step. It wants us to make 13 squares of 1 and 5 eighths of assorted pinks, and of course we need that many squares of white. You'll notice it says 1 and 5 eighths. I hate dealing with 5 eighths when I don't have to. So I'm going to cut 2 inch squares, and then I'm going to use one of my favorite tools, the black lock, to trim them down. Just going to cut a two inch square. Actually, I'm just going to cut a strip so I can do multiples. I could also cut it length, length of fabric. I'm just doing it this way for the video to show you. All right, I have my two inch square of my white. Let's grab one of these pinks and make a two inch square out of it. Remember, when we go to make half square triangles, we're going to put right sides together. You can take a ruler. I like to use this little magic wand. You put the center of the magic wand corner to corner. Take a marking pen or a mechanical pencil. Mark both sides of the wand. Do that to all of your squares so that they look like this. And we're going to go to the machine and sew them up. All right, so now that I have all my half square triangles ready, I'm going to sew them together. I like to lower my stitch length a little bit, so I'll take it down to a 2.25 or a 2.0 on the Berninas. I also like to use my stylus or all. Both those terms are kind of used interchangeably. I like to use it to help hold it, guide through at the very end. So all I'm going to do, is I'm just going to put my fabric in here. I also like to sew on the line into my seam allowance versus in my triangle. That way it helps when I go to uh, trim them, I have, I'm less likely to be short on it. You'll notice I like the chain piece a lot when I'm quilting. All right, now that we're all done with that, let's cut them apart and go to the ironing board. So now that we have our half square triangles sewn, we're just going to cut them in half. Remember we put that quarter inch line on our stitching line, cut them in half, and then we're going to press them open. Remember when you're pressing, I like to pull on, press on the wool mats. They uh, help retain the steam, give you a nice sharp crisp press, and we're going to press to the dark fabric. So I set my seam. Now I'm going to finger press this open. I'm going to take my iron, hold it on there for a few seconds, just so I get a nice half square triangle. Do that with all your half square triangles. And then we'll go to the cutting table again and we'll show you how to square them up.
Okay, so now we've sewed our half square triangles, we've pressed them, now we're going to trim them up. And if any of you watched our 12 Days of Christmas, you know I love the block lock for trimming half square triangles because I always make my pieces oversized. Take your block lock with the writing down in your right hand, the seam and your dark fabric in your upper left corner. You'll notice it just slides right in this channel. I need to trim these to one and a quarter inch squares. Slide it down that channel again. Find your mark. And trim them off. And here we have our cute little half square triangle. Okay, so this project takes about 25 half square triangles. So now that we have a bunch cut, let's go lay it out. It's a real simple layout. It goes one, two, three, and then we're gonna go to five. So we keep adding and then we're gonna go lower. It's just a randomness of our pinks and our golds or yellows. I do like to make one strip primarily yellow as I go down. Okay, so now that we've come over to our sewing machine, we're gonna sew our setting triangles and our half square triangles together to make rows, and then the rows together to make the top of our pin cushion. Again, I like using that smaller stitch length and also using my stylus to help guide through toward the end of my seam allowance here. Now that I have all my rows sewn together, my seams are pressed open, I'm just gonna give it one more nice press to hold it down nice and flat. You'll notice our setting triangles are a little bit bigger than they need to be. Don't worry, the pattern does that on purpose. We're gonna trim it up later. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna put our batting behind it and we're gonna go and quilt. And I've pinned the batting to the back of it. We're gonna quilt the two pieces together. So we were sewing on a two or a 2.25. I'm gonna take that up a little bit. I'm probably gonna take it back to my normal 2.5 on my Bernina. You'll also notice I've attached my walking foot. I don't have to because this machine has dual feed. So if you have a machine that has dual feed, you're ready to go. I personally just like sewing with my walking foot whenever I'm doing quilting or um, things where I have multiple layers. I'm gonna choose to use like a 16th of an inch measurement, which for me on this walking foot, on the Bernina walking foot, is the very inside metal piece. And all I'm gonna do is I'm just going to stitch along my seams to quilt it a little bit. Now I need to stitch all my seams. So this is gonna be a lengthy process, but I'm just gonna leave it attached I'm going to turn my fabric and lower it and quilt again. So that I'm going in both directions and I want to be nice and close. You can change your thread if you don't like the color that you, you were sewing with and you want a different color for your top stitching or your quilting, you can do that. Now that we have our front of our pin cushion all quilted, I'm gonna take my back fabric and my back piece of batting and I'm just gonna quilt this. 
You'll notice I just created a simple grid pattern. You can quilt the back however you want. I just thought this was a quick and easy way to do it. Okay, so now that we have our front and our back made for our pin cushion, we're just going to trim them up. I like to make sure that I'm not cutting off my corners on my top piece. So I just make sure that I have that quarter inch seam available. So now that I have my top and back pinned together, I'm just going to sew this together on three sides. The fourth side, I'm going to sew a little bit on each end, but make sure that I keep an opening so I can flip my pin cushion right side out and fill it with my crushed walnuts. So now that we have our top and bottom of our pin cushion sewn together, we have our opening in one of the seams up here. We're going to clip our corners. We can take it over to the ironing board if we want and press our seams open. You don't have to do this. You can if you want. We're going to take our space here and we're going to turn our pin cushion right side out. Once we have our pin cushion flipped right side out, we're going to fill it with crushed walnuts. The reason we use crushed walnuts is every time you put your pin into your pin cushion filled with crushed walnuts, it sharpens the pin. Hope you enjoyed our tutorial. Remember, all the patterns we use today are from our Pin Pals book. We have crushed walnuts in the store, and I'm also going to make a few of these kits using the fabrics that I did today. Enjoy!